Hi, I'm Tyler Fultz. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. Don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Today we're going to be looking at another one of Kurtzgesagt's videos called You're a Dream of the Universe According to Science. This one might get a little out there, but let's take a look. Absolutely everything you think about yourself and the universe could be an illusion. As far as you know, you are real and exist in a universe that was born 14 billion years ago and that gave rise to galaxies, stars, the Earth, and finally you. Except, maybe not. You may actually not exist for real, but be the dream of a dead universe. You and everything you think exists. Crazy as it sounds, this may be an unavoidable consequence of our best scientific theories about the universe. I think I know what this is getting at. Those Boltzmann brains, the idea that brain just showing up in the void may be more likely than the universe forming the way we think it did with the Big Bang cosmological inflation and the formation that we expect it to, and it have this sort of false memory associated with it. I'm pretty sure it's just a it's just a thought experiment designed to test unsolved universal problems, uh, big physics problems, uh, that sort of thing with how we think about the universe. But that's my understanding of it. I haven't seen this come up too much as a nuclear engineer, but I do remember when taking some of these uh, theoretical physics classes, someone mentioned the Boltzmann brain and I was just like, what? Okay, this is a bit much. Let's start at the beginning. We need to understand three concepts for this idea to make sense. One, the arrow of time. What distinguishes the past from the future? Put a drop of red ink into a glass of water and you see the ink spread until it fills the container, but never the opposite. Colored water where ink spontaneously concentrates and becomes a drop at the surface again. That'd be cool time though. It always seems to flow in the direction in which the ink spreads. But if you take a microscope, all you will see will be a swarm of molecules colliding at random. There are no rules, no forwards and backwards. Every individual motion that happens can occur in reverse. But we perceive a sort of arrow of time that makes things happen in one direction. How does this phenomenon occur? So on the note of... I'm used to nuclear physics being a big probability game, like causing fission, for instance, a neutron, splitting apart a uranium nucleus into two fission products, but there isn't the, a reversibility to this process about, uh, <laughs> let's say, krypton and cesium or what have you somehow fusing back into... No. No. <laughs> it's incredibly hard to induce uh, fusion for very, uh, very he heavy elements such as that. Well, this arrow of time is not actually fundamental, but a matter of probability. When ink molecules spread to fill a glass, there are many different slots of space they can occupy, and therefore many different possibilities to combine them. And just like your chances of winning the lottery grow the more tickets you have, the probability that ink molecules will end up filling the glass is much higher than the probability that they'll concentrate in just one spot. Okay, just like nuclear reactions, uh, you play the game enough times, you're going to cause enough fissions. Keep throwing neutrons at a uh, uranium-235 nucleus, it's bound to happen because you play the game so many times on the order of nanoseconds. So, I'm with you. It's fascinating. So it's not that the ink forming a drop again is forbidden by the laws of physics, it's just extremely unlikely. Mm. To see it, you'd have to wait about 10 to the power of 100 sextillion years. A one followed by 100 sextillion zeros. Probably something similar for uh, fission products fusing back together. <laughs> if you had this much time to spare, eventually, by pure random chance, you'd see a red blob form again. Actually, with enough time, you could see any shape forming. Like, for example, a small, red, soggy brain. Okay, okay, let's move on to idea two. They're going to bring that up, I'm sure. Two, the Boltzmann the brain. future of the universe. Our universe was born 14 billion years ago in the Big Bang. It expanded and evolved to give rise to the myriads of galaxies and things. In other words, the universe is kind of a glass of water with a lot of ink doing stuff. It has an arrow of time. But the universe is not a static glass. It seems to be getting bigger at an ever-increasing speed because of dark energy. 
basically everything in it is getting more and more diluted. In about 100 trillion years, the last star will die. Then, few interesting things will happen for the next few decillions, vantillions, and googles of years. <laughs> Playing fun with the large numbers, sure. I appreciate the scientific notation at the bottom. That, that's good. <laughs> Eventually, the universe will be a dark place fully dominated by dark energy, a rapidly expanding ball of pure space almost devoid of matter. You might think that this would lead to the ultimate death of everything, but dark energy has one last surprise for you. In a universe dominated by dark energy, space expands... If you haven't seen my uh, reaction to Kurtzgazat's other versions where they talk about how the universe could end, here we're talking about heat death again. I'll pin a comment below so you can check out some of their alternative theories. Yeah, this is uh, interesting how everything at this point that's going down to its elementary particles, if we're talking a Google years plus, that something complex could form out of nowhere. That's, uh, that's pretty crazy. So dramatically that it creates a cosmic horizon around you, a border beyond which nothing will ever be able to reach you, not even light. So for every practical purpose, the universe has become a glass of finite size about 36 billion light years wide, surrounded by an impassable cosmic horizon. Such a universe glass is basically a giant black hole turned inside out. We know that due to quantum effects, all black holes emit a tiny amount of particles, a phenomenon known as Hawking radiation. And so does our inside out black hole. In the end, this radiation will fill the universe glass with particles again. At this point, so far in the future that giving you a number has no more meaning, we've reached the true final state. The universe has now become a closed box full of particles at an extremely low but finite temperature. And since they have a temperature, they undergo random motions. Or in other words, a glass. That's crazy, the idea of a black hole just working backwards like that. I know that's, a, that's an analogy, but I'm not so sure about that one. It's filled with water and ink and an infinite amount of time ahead. Things are about to become interesting again. Three, typing monkeys and... The funny thing with an infinite amount of time, everything, even something that is almost impossible, if it has the almost word almost in it, it's inevitable that it'll happen because if you're playing with infinity, it's, it's fascinating to think about on that long of a scale. Universes. Eternity is a long, long time. So now, even the most extremely... What's interesting is the literal definition of eternity just means outside of this time dimension. <laughs> but yeah, I, I get what they're, what they're driving at. Likely things can happen. The fluctuating particles are bumping into each other over and over and over again, creating every combination of particles that's possible. They're like a monkey typing at random on a typewriter. Almost all of the time it types gibberish. But with enough time, eventually it will write the first acts of Hamlet. And with even more time, the complete works of Eminem. If it <laughs> I've heard this one before about the monkey writing it. Hamlet and then the entire works of Shakespeare given enough time. And, yep, perfect example of something highly unlikely, but technically not impossible. So, yeah, infinite time, it's happening. Eminem. <laughs> in our universe glass generates any random arrangements of particles, what could they be? Well, a spontaneous fluctuation could give rise to a planet, or to a galaxy, or even to a lot of them. So maybe our universe has already ended, and all we see around us is a pop-up universe. Not a universe that evolved from a Big Bang, but one that fluctuated into existence by pure chance. Either way, a universe is universe, right? Doesn't matter how you got there. In before all the people talk about universe purists that's like, hey, we had to grow it the old fashioned way, development via Big Bang versus just popping up. But in a way that gives hope to the whole heat death scenario that you can have these pop up universes. And if it's at all possible, infinite amount of time, it's happening. And that, like the drop of ink, will only exist for a while before dissolving again. Being random, pop-up universes could be similar to ours, but with funny glitches. In some of these universes, dinosaurs are riding snails. In another, stars are made of blueberries. In another, you're wearing a funny hat. I like that the funny hat one's supposed to be the most goofy one. Scientists in such universes wouldn't understand those glitches, so maybe the greatest mysteries of physics are just nonsense bugs of our pop-up universe. That's fascinating, and... 
What if the principles behind how uh, nuclear reactions work, the whole uh, the leftover mass energy that we use to uh, provide electricity with, with all these nuclear reactions, wouldn't that be something if that entire industry were based off a bug? I can live with that. But not all possible fluctuations of our dead universe have the same probability of occurring. Smaller fluctuations are much more probable than bigger ones. A planet is more likely than a galaxy. But you know what's even way more likely? A human brain. Here it comes. Here comes the Boltzmann brain. Get ready for it. Are you actually just a brain? You think, therefore, you exist. But what else do you truly know? In the end, your brain is just interpreting signals from your senses and creating a world that you experience. So technically, you could be just your brain that thinks the world is real. And if we follow the logic of the ink in the universe class, in particular, you could be a disembodied brain that, just by chance, emerged in a dead universe with your complete set of knowledge and memories. This is a pretty bizarre idea, but if we do the maths, it's kind of pretty solid. Let's compare the number of brains inside bodies in a living universe with the number of naked brains in a dead universe. Let's go really big and imagine that a total of 100 quadrillion humans will live around Earth, and that the same amount of people will live around every... What they're doing is they're calculating the probability between, between the likelihood of the weird brains. And this is kind of used as a weird thought experiment test case for other wacky scientific theories. ...are in the universe. If we add this together, we get about 10 to the power of 41 brains inside bodies that will exist. However, <laughs> in a dead universe that has had enough time to explore all possible fluctuations... Calling them floating brains, okay. ...that will exist forever, the number of naked brains that would emerge is, well, infinite. So the probability <laughs> yeah. that you're a floating brain is not only vastly larger than the probability that you're a real human, it's so inconceivably larger that we can't even meaningfully quantify the difference. How do you compare a number to infinity? So, are you a floating brain that exists for one moment in time, then basically forever passes, and then you exist for another moment in time? Maybe not even in that order. Maybe your life happens backwards, and you just don't notice. Maybe you've lived trillions of times already. Interesting that to bring up the trillions of times one, Kurtz Gazat did another video called uh, The Egg, um, where it, it gets into the idea that you lived every single life in the universe that ever existed. Now this one's more of a story rather than a scientific type video, but it's starting to make me think about that too. The dream of a dead universe? Really? Like, really? <laughs> well, probably not. <laughs> First of all, there are a few loopholes. For example, dark energy could behave completely differently from what we think today and lead us to another future. Or maybe our dead universe will be too motionless to allow the creation of brains, even with infinite time. Or maybe the universe will end up dying in another way. Our understand- I mean, if it's truly impossible to make the brain thing, then yeah, that, that, that would stop it. ...of the cosmos doesn't have a solid enough foundation for anyone to worry if they're real or not. Loopholes aside, hmm. if you were a fluctuating brain, all the laws of physics stored in your brain would have originated at random and shouldn't bear any relation to the real world. But we Then again, it's kind of like the uh, monkey thing with the whole writing out the Shakespeare. So your brain spontaneously existed, and then your brain developed a mental model with all of our current laws of physics. Multiplying two really small numbers by each other, but... <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? ...just use those laws to prove that you're a floating brain. So even if you believe that you are a floating brain, you'd have to admit that you have no good reason to believe that you are actually a floating brain. Hmm, okay, so this hallucinatory trip might teach us something about... <laughs> I'm a floating brain attached to a person in the regular universe, there you go. ...our theories about the universe. But in the end, it's just a really weird exercise in what you can do with physics. An exercise of what brains and bodies are able it's to do. It's Yoda. So don't worry. You're not a dream of the dead universe. Probably. I like that it ends with a prop with a probably. What do you guys think? Are you all a bunch of floating brains out there? Am I a floating brain? Are some of us floating brains and some of us not floating brains? How would we tell the difference? It's a trippy video. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.